Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be building a budget gaming PC. Now this build is unconventional in the fact that a lot of components were bundled. A lot of PC builds here on YouTube will be put together individually but to be honest in my experience the best deals can be found as combos. Also, when buying used, be sure to purchase motherboard standoffs, SATA cables or IDE if you're using very old hardware, as well as some screws because not all parts come with these like you'd get with the new stuff. A case fan would also be a good idea. Here we have our case, which not only came with a decent enough 450 watt power supply, but it also included a DVD drive as well. Even if you consider these obsolete, if you have slow internet like I do, then these can be a lifesaver, as downloading games will take time, and having them on disc will save a ton of that download time. Total spend so far £8 or $10. We went for a 1156 socket motherboard bundle that features 8GB of DDR3 RAM, as well as an i7-860 quad-core CPU, clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. This cost us £100, which is about $126. If we wanted to buy these separately, then it would have cost more, as 1156 boards seem to be on the rise price-wise. So far, we've spent £108 or $136. All we need now is a graphics card and hard drive before we can put all this together. Another £10 or $12 and we had bought ourselves a reconditioned 500 gigabyte hard drive. As for the graphics card, we decided to go for a GTX 750 Ti because since the release of the 1050, prices of these, even used, have been plummeting. We found ours at £50 or about $63. I decided to go with this as it's low power and works on any PSU as long as it's above 300 watts. It would probably work on a weaker one too as it requires no power connector. So let's put this thing together. First of all, remember to put the back plate in. This will be a pain if you forget and have already installed everything else. With that in, let's get the hard drive in. Simply slot it in and screw it down. Let's get the motherboard bundle in next. Make sure you've got some standoffs, like I said, for your motherboard to sit on to avoid it touching the case. Now, you may not need standoffs if you have raised areas built into the case like we've got here, but always take time to check how things are set out. Simply sit the board on the standoffs or the raised areas and screw the board in. It's also a good time to install the case fan. So with everything in but the GPU, let's attach all the cables to where they need to be. Now these cables correspond to a certain group of pins on the motherboard. Each case and motherboard is different, but if you look up your motherboard model online followed by the words front panel layout, then you'll likely find which pins do what and where each cable needs to go. It's then just a matter of lining everything up and plugging them in. This section controls our on button, reset button, etc. And also the USB and audio connectors too. Match them up to the corresponding group of pins and then that's the fiddly stuff out of the way. Next, attach a SATA cable to both the hard drive and the DVD drive or IDE cable if you went with older tech and connect the other ends to the motherboard. Take your PSU power connectors and connect those up too. Also, the SATA power connectors should be connected as well. So now let's get our GPU in. This takes up two slots, so remove two little gate things at the back of your case to accommodate. Slot your card into the PCIe socket and screw it down at the back. If it's a more powerful GPU, you may also need a power connector, but as you know, in this case, we don't. So there we have it. £168 or $211 later and we've got ourselves a budget gaming system. The operating system will add more to that of course. We have opted for Windows 10 in this case. Let's test this thing out with a few games and see how it performs.
everything there at 1080p with our sub £200 or roughly $200 build. To be honest, I think it did quite nicely. Now I know guys, we do use the 750Ti a lot, we've used it in the past quite a few times, but especially now with the release of the 10 series cards, the prices of these have just been going down and down recently, and to be honest, I think they're even better value for money than they've always been anyway. So that's it really, there's nothing else left to say. Thank you all so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps you out if you're planning on building a budget PC similar to this one. If you need any help or advice regarding a PC build, leave a comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you didn't enjoy it so much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.